Okay, after a short break, we have uh, Jan talking, who's behind me, on the real-time tuning analysis. And if people are interested in the uh, TV streaming that Andreas was talking about before, um, you can bug him during the afternoon tea break and he'll show, show you German TV from his uh, streaming from his home to here, which is actually pretty awesome. Okay, over to Jan. Right. Thanks. Um, hi, this is, this is a talk that um, in my usual fashion, I like to prepare talks by choosing something that I've been wanting to hack on for a while and then giving myself a deadline to actually do it by saying <laughs> I will talk about it and then starting on the project. Um, I, my name is Jan Schmidt. I am a GStreamer developer. Uh, since I've been working with GStreamer since 2003. And for the last few years, I've been working with Sebastian and some other friends. We started a company called Centricular, and we do purely GStreamer consulting. Um, I live about five hours drive from here up on the Victoria, New South Wales border at Albury Wodonga on a nice little plot of land where we grow our own ducks and sheep and keep honey and um, the last few years homo sapiens. <laughs> um, most of those are for food, some are not. <laughs> yeah. um, I've been coming to LinuxCon for a long time now. The, the first one I came to was Sydney in 2001, which is where I met my wife. So this is kind of like a 15 year anniversary for us. Um, to celebrate, we've brought our boys along for the first time, having their first Linux conf over in the childcare. Um, so thank you all, to, thank you to the conference organisers for providing those cool childcare services and family-friendly environment. But real-time tuning analysis. This is a story that starts when I was that young. Um, in high school, I had a, a brief desire to learn the flute. And I went to my parents and I said, I'd like to learn the flute. And they said, no. And I said, being a good child, all right. Um, went on with my life. I've never studied music because of that. But I told that story to my wife. Well, you know, got busy with other things. I told that story to my wife. And for my birthday last year, she bought me a, a flute. So I've started learning music and studying. Um, and. I told my parents my wife had bought me a flute and they said, oh, we remember in high school you wanted to learn the flute and we said no and we said to each other, if he asks one more time, we'll get it for him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you get for being a good child. Yep. Um, one of the things you have to do when you play the flute is learn to tune and the old school method is you get someone with an in-tune instrument and they play a note for you and you play a note and you tune. Um, I don't know if people know, you tune a flute, but you've got a cork in the end which gives you the tuning length, but gen generally you, um, you just tune it by sliding the headpiece in and out a little bit. And um, mine, in a cold room like this, probably sits about there, a little ways out. The modern method is you get a nice app on your phone and um, it has a piece of software in there that's going to perform a Fourier transform on the, the sounds that it's listening to, pick out some peak in the spectrum and call that the pitch, and then swing a needle to tell you whether you're high or low and you slide your, your um, head joint in or out a little bit and, and try again. So I've been learning a lot about that. I never, not having a musical background, it's been pretty interesting um, and learning about do the, the, the construction of music, the way that scales are put together, and this concept of temperament, which is um, about the, act the spacing of notes within an octave. Uh, we generally, in modern music, we use this equal temperament where notes are spaced evenly throughout the, the octave, but I've learned there are different temperaments where notes will be adjusted up or down a small fraction um, and you get different notes. And in fact, I've, I've learned that, say, in the 1600s, our notion of modern music would be considered gauche and sound a bit jarring to, to people because they were used to it. Um, one day along the way, I, I, I learned flute at our local um, conservatorium in Albury. I've got a, a teacher there. And one of the other teachers runs a Irish trad flute group. So I was learning some things about 
trad flute one night and thinking maybe I should, should um, try that at some point. And I was browsing the, the web and I came across this mcgeeflutes.com which is the website of a, a, a really interesting guy who lives near Batemans Bay and makes Irish traditional flutes like that one by hand and um, the, the scope of these things is amazing. I found tutorials on the web that range from building your own Irish trad flute by going and getting some PVC from Bunnings and boring out holes at the, the right locations to more complicated flutes that do start to add in keys um, to, to improve the tuning. And um, this one's got a slide so you can tune it on the fly a bit. They run to thousands and thousands of dollars and he hand makes them and chooses them and he'll customise them for a particular player. If your fingers aren't the right, aren't exactly the right size, then he'll move the holes slightly to accommodate. It's really interesting that the, the level of detail. Um, I bought myself one. This is a Chinese cast um, C5 that cost me about 17 bucks, not thousands of dollars. So here I'm... Um, and sounds like a recorder, it's really not as, not as um, good. I'm also very new on this, so I have a lot of trouble getting a sound out of this one at all. You know, a bit nicer than your average student recorder, but not much. I'd like to try that flute. <laughs> <laughs> Terry has this gigantic website where he runs you through all about how he builds his flutes and the, the history of Irish flutes, and along the way, talks about a bit of a software that he worked on with a, a guy, and I'll come to the bit of software in a second, but it performs this, this concept of real-time tuning analysis. So most tuning apps will give you a needle and they'll tell you if it hears a note, it'll tell you which note it heard, and then when it'll sit there if you stop playing, so you can at least sit there. But what the real-time tuning analysis idea is that you run your DSP, um, it's running a bunch of complicated analysis to really pick out the pitch as if as a human would detect the same things and then collect it over time. And so there's a little graph there it's showing all the notes that it's heard. So what Terry can do is as he's building a flute, he can just pick up the flute and play a tune and then go across to the tuner and it'll tell him all the way across the board how were the notes, was you know, D a little fraction too low and he can actually bore out the hole you know, slightly further up or further down the barrel to adjust the tuning of each flute as he builds it. So it analyzes the signal, it does some analysis to detect the notes, um, it does a measure of the clarity of a note to try and winnow out and, and some thresholding on the number of samples it's done to th try and throw away noise and build a complete picture of what the instrument sounds like. And this works, it's written, it, it, it was written for flutes, but it works for any single voiced instrument. So if you're playing, if you're finger picking on a guitar or you're playing individual notes on a piano, it can work for that arrangement as well. It can't work with chords and complex sounds, but then again, you can't tune off that anyway. <clears throat> and the implementation of this bit of software is a, a PhD thesis um, from a, a guy called Phil McLeod who did his PhD at the University of Otago in New Zealand. And this work is about 10 years old. I'm, a, I'm talking about it because it's due to me. But he finished his, his PhD thesis in 2005, I think, and this software has more or less sat idle since then. But it's GPL v3 software. The code is there. <coughs> uh, I put a little bit of information about the, the algorithms it's using for its pitch detection. It uses a, a modified Kepstrom, which is not a transform that I've dealt with before, but is um, derived from the word spectrum by inverting the first four letters. So I get, you, as I understand it, you take the logarithm of the power spectrum of a signal and do an inverse um, Fourier transform on that, which is why you get the reversed spectrum back out. And that, it's a transform that's used a lot for speech detection and, and um, voice recognition. And he uses a modified algorithm that avoids excursions into the negative domain for quiet signals. 
and also has a prony algorithm attached to it that can do analysis of the vibrato of a particular note as well. So you can, you can, that's how you get your measure of the, the clarity, whether you're playing a sustained single note or whether you've got a five, six, seven hertz vibrato mixed into it. And the, so the bit of software is named after this guy called Giuseppe Tartini, who uh, was a musician, played the violin in the 1600s, and um, was notably a very good violinist. He was one of the original owners of a, a Stradivari get, um, violin made by Stradivarius. And so fits into a fairly niche category of people that have owned these world famous violins. Uh, people have probably heard of Stradivarius violins as one of the most famous makes of violin in the world. And his other claim to fame is that he was the first person to recognise that if you play two notes that are harmonically related, you should be able to hear a beat derived from the other, the other notes. So he made a big contribution to the concept of tuning instruments in that, in that form. And Tartini is this nice bit of software, which I will just jump out over here. Uh, where is this window? It's a bit confusing because it's the screen's there, but it's logically off the right hand side of my. All right. Um, so it has a couple of problems, which is one of which is it's 10 years old and uses the RT audio, uses an import of the RT audio library that only supports ALSA, which means with a pulse audio system, it can't access the sound device. No. Um, if I pick that up and It, it was picking up that note nicely. It's recording, it records wave files, which is another bit of a, a limitation. So you can also open up a, a wave file and it will analyze that for you and then give view. So this is also a different resolution than I ran it last time, so it's a bit hard to see all of the things We've got the summary, there's this little piece of music has all of these notes it's collected. And you can slide back and forth through time to, to have a look at individual notes. There's that A that I played you, shining up nice and bright there. It's really cool. It has, it has some really nice windows in here too. Like, um, Let me bring up a piano keyboard and yeah, 3D harmonics. All right. So that's, I think, pretty cool. And it, those were the right notes it was picking up. My other one that I like that doesn't doesn't seem to work really well, but it's kind of cool. Um, is, yeah, this one. There you go, that's what I played. <laughs> so you can play a, a little piece like that. How do I get it to scroll back there? Oh yeah, there you go. And it'll, it's picked up the... So you can just play a tune and it's going to pick out the score and transcribe that for you. I think that's pretty neat. Um, so it, Tartini does a lot more than just tuning analysis. It'll really let you take a look at the, the shape of an instrument and um, how you're playing on it and just let you concentrate on performance. Maybe this side again. So that was Tartini and the next step from that I found is that someone took Phil's work and turned it into a, 
a Windows app, he called it Flutini, and it does a much simplified version of that thing where it, you just either open a WAV file or you play into your microphone and it collates just the notes that it's heard, tells you how many samples of each that it, that it heard, and then gives you a little graph over whether they were flat or sharp. And so you, you can see there in that little graph that the A in the fifth octave was a bit sharp, but everything else was reasonably well in tune, up or down. And it, so the other thing about the flute is, is um, you can affect that pitch, unlike a piano where playing a key plays that note, and your piano might be out of tune or might not be. Playing the flute, you can be out of tune by blowing incorrectly. Um, you might shift the note, you can play in the wrong octave, and a, a tool like this can really help you watch and say, oh, well, I'm consistently playing G just a little bit flat and maybe focus on your performance of that, that note a bit. Um, Flutini is just a Windows app, so I wanted one for, for me to use, um, and I wanted one that I can put on my phone. And because I'm a GStreamer developer, I wanted it to be in the form of a GStreamer plugin, which then removes those limitations of ulcer only and WAV files only and opens up integration into every other GStreamer uh, element, reading all the formats that GStreamer supports or analysing a small snippet of a piece of music being played in a, in a movie, all of those things. So I've started a project called Salvini, which is a name chosen because um, Signor Salvini was um, Giuseppe Tartini's student of the violin in the 1600s and started converting Tartini into a, a G-Streamer plugin. So step one, take a copy of all of the Tartini source files, delete all of the GUI stuff, delete the RT audio subdirectory, delete a bunch more, remove all the dependency on Qt, all of the locking things, I'm not doing multiple threads anymore, so Tartini runs a separate audio capture thread to, its, to do the analysis in separate from the GUI thread. All of that will be handled within GStreamer, so just strip out a whole bunch of things, fix it. So fix anything that I broke along the way, that took a little while. And then pull in some the real-time tuning analysis pieces that were written for the Flutini app, um, because Tartini does that recording. It actually then, the process for getting that summary view um, from Tartini is to export things and then run some Optive scripts over the, the exported data to generate that. So the guy had, for Flutini, he wrote that um, just as a nice CPP, C++ class file, and I pulled that in and then wrap it all up in a GStreamer element based on our base filter class. So the, the actual GStreamer code is 100 lines of code, it's not very big. Um, and it just receives buffers and then feeds them into the Tartini code. Some differences in the, the interfacing. We now, it's a GStreamer is G-object based, so we have G-object properties for what were all of the um, Q settings um, taken out of Qt. And instead of handing off custom structures, it uses our GStreamer infrastructure. It passes a GStreamer message onto the bus, which then gets shifted up through the pipeline and handed off to the, an application. And um, that, so that represents the whole data flow for this plugin. It's going to take in some audio samples, analyze them, and then spit out the identical audio samples for downstream processing while sending summary messages up the bus. And that, if I come over here, um, just check that I'm in the right environment here. Yep, okay. So if I do the GST launch line, I can capture from Pulse Audio, run it through my analysis, and then spit it out to Fake Sync. And if I tell it dash M, then I'll get those messages with the summary of what notes it's hearing and until it picks up what the um, noise floor is, it's getting a lot of just listening to me, not getting pure notes, but once I start So you can see it's picking up that G quite strongly as the 
the bottom sample then. <laughs> There's my summary view with all the notes that it's heard. You can winnow it by the number of samples of each one and how in tune or not they were and use that information to crop out anything with just a few samples is probably background noise. And then I also had a um, another version that just does the same thing but spits it out as on the command line in a table. So I had hoped by today that I would be on to the next step of this, uh, which is the working Android app. But instead of my normal Android development method, I decided to use Google's new Android Studio, which I've never done J and I stuff in before. So I've actually spent most of my time fighting with the build system, trying to get it to build my my plugin, but the way this works for GStreamer um, in general when you include it in an app is you have a GStreamer, um, you have your, your Android app as a standard Java app and then you have a Java native interface module you compile as a .so file that includes all of the, the GStreamer plugins you want statically compiled and a JNI interface that your app talks to to kick off the analysis and get back the messages um, or link if, if you'd write a, if you're writing video output then you have some UI for some API for passing back and forth handles that embed the video playback window into your app so it all works seamlessly. The UI itself is implemented in Java and for my purposes all I want to do is compile a simple .so file that runs something like that command line pipeline um, but using the open S, -L -E -L S audio source instead of Pulse Audio. I'm not quite there yet. I have a, you know, if my talk was later this afternoon, I might have been able to show that off. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have a couple more minutes, so I might just, two more minutes. There we go. Play you this obscure piece I've been learning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions? What was it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Mozart, I don't remember. <laughs> so we've got time for maybe a question, if it's quick. No questions, he explained it all perfectly well. One at the back, hang on. What did the sense column represent? Just um, that. So the sense is how many hundredths you are above or below. So negative sense is you're a bit flat. Um, so yeah, you can see most of those, I'm either spot on or I'm a tiny bit flat, which means I could slide the head joint in a millimetre and probably be more in tune across the, the range. It's, um, what have I got? I got Send it in a hundredth of a note. Yep. So my D3 is a little, was a little bit sharp and my D5 is a little bit flat, so I might need to just tweak the cork to bring them in tune across the two octaves. Um, so you talked about different temperaments there. The, uh, the actual note that you're reading and, uh, and so forth, is that based just purely on a frequency map? So is it a, yeah. a mathematical calculation? Or like, could you apply other temperaments to it? Yep. I, I haven't put that into the um, real-time tuning plugin as yet, but if you look in Tartini, you've got preferences and it has uh, limits on that. Now, the, so the, yeah, so Tartini just has the has all these config options for turning on and off which analysis it's going to do. It was in the RTTA module that was added for Flutini, which I can run in Wine quite successfully. And if I come here, 
Okay, so if I grab Flutini, it just has options for, I think it had different temperament options. Yeah, so it has presets for um, just temperaments and they're kind of hard to see in the way that Wine draws that drop down. Special one, two, three, or custom, and then you can adjust in sense the tuning of each node in the octave mm. up or down. Oh. Yep. Thirteen. Okay, so on that note, oh, that was bad. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, very much unplanned. Yes, I assure you. Um, thank you, Jan. Your joke went a little flat. <laughs> His was worse. <laughs> <laughs>